Hello all, in today's video we are going to learn about the IPv4 delivery mechanism. In the previous video we have learnt about the IPv4 address format where IPv4 is a 32 bit address. In today's video we are going to learn about the datagram format of IPv4. Just to remind you all that IP is a connection less protocol used by the TCP IP protocol. Uh, just a reminder, this is the TCP IP protocol suit. If you want to know about this, there is a video on TCP IP protocol suit. You can look at it. You can see here, this is the position of the IPv4 protocol at the network layer. So, uh, IP is a unreliable connectionless protocol. IP is a unreliable connectionless protocol basically called as a best effort delivery protocol wherein it doesn't provide any flow control or error control features. The best it can do is it can make a transmission of datagram from source to destination without any guarantee of reliability. Then who has to take care of this? It will be taken care by the higher level pro higher layer protocols like TCP. We are going to study about the datagram format. The datagram has two parts. Why am I calling it as a datagram and not as a packet? Because it's a connectionless service. In an analogy to the uh, postal system where we have telegram and all, we are naming this packet as a datagram. So the datagram basically consists of the information that has to be transmitted, but it consists of a header and the data that has to be transmitted. The header consists of the information about the datagram like represented in different fields. So this is the entire header format and this is the data that has to be transmitted. What is this field? Version field tells you that the IP protocol is of version 4. In case of IPv6, the version value is going to be 6. Then comes H length meaning the header length. What is the length of this header in this entire datagram? It is variable, point number one, it is variable and it could be either 20 bytes or it could be 60 bytes. If the value of this header length is equals to 5, then 4 bits, 4 into 5, it will give you 20 bytes header. If the value of this field is 15, then it will give you 4 into 15, that is 60 bytes. Then coming on to the next field that is the service field. This field specifies what kind of service is the datagram providing. So the service could be you are providing uh, you are providing minimized cost, maximized throughput or you are providing minimized delay and or maximized reliability. These are the different services that has to be provided. So this field tells you about this. Then comes the total length field. This total length, this is only the header length. What is the total length of the datagram? The total length of the datagram is given by, you can see the total length of the datagram is given by the length of the header plus the length of the data. If you only want the length of the data, then you will subtract the header length from the total length. That will give you the length of the data. Then we have next three fields, the identification field, the flag field and the fragmentation offset. All these three fields are related with a concept called as fragmentation that we will discuss in the next slide. Before that, let me tell you what is time to live protocol and header checksum. Time to live is the amount of time the datagram can exist in the network. Meaning what I do is I will set the datagram time to live as two times the maximum number of routes from the source to the destination. For example, I have a source and a destination. The datagram is moving in this network with these many routers in between. So what I do is every datagram, every route that the datagram visits, every hop that it makes, the time to live it is decremented by 1. For example, my time to live is given as 9. So every time the datagram visits a particular router, the time to live is decremented by 1. Once the time to live becomes 0, what happens? The 
life of the datagram is over it will be discarded from the network why do you want to set a time to live and discard the root uh, the datagrams from the network because you would like to save the bandwidth so that these datagrams do not wander around in the network and waste the bandwidth then comes the protocol field what is the next field 8 bit field called as protocol field it tells you that it defines the higher level protocol that uses the services of ipv4 so which protocols are using the services of ipv4 hardly any services it provides so the services can be used by icmp igmp ospf protocols at network layer and sctp tcp and udp protocols at transport layers so if the value of this field is 1 that means icmp is a protocol using the services if the value is 2 igmp if the value is 6 tcp 17 udp 89 ospf you need not remember and write these values you can only you only have to specify which are the protocols which will be using the services of ipv4 that is the purpose of the protocol field what is the next field the next field is the header checksum field meaning i am computing the header the checksum for this header this complete header i am checking the checksum you all know we have made a video on checksum of how i calculate the checksum by getting by adding all the bits getting the ones complement of it and again doing the same side same thing at the receiver side to find out whether there was an error or not you can watch the video on checksum so the checksum is used to provide the error detection of the header then comes the source ip address and destination ip address then comes the uh, source ad uh, ipv4 address of the source and ipv4 address of the destination is specified in these fields now we will look up to the topic which i was telling that is fragmentation what is fragmentation and why do we need these three fields identification there were three fields identification flags and offset fragmentation offset these are the three fields to understand these three fields you need to know that we need to understand what is fragmentation fragmentation is breaking down or dividing a datagram into fragments if it is too large for a network to carry every network has a mtu a maximum transfer unit meaning that i cannot transmit for example a datagram more than 1500 bytes for example your datagram is 4000 byte long then what i have to do i have to divide this 4000 byte datagram into smaller units of 1500 or less each that is called as fragmentation now when i do fragmentation of a particular datagram what i have to do the fields i need to have some fields for example i had a datagram of 4000 i divided into three datagrams three fragments 1 2 3 all these fragments they belong to the same datagram that means these data uh, these fragments should have some identification number telling that they all belong to the same datagram because once they are fragmented at the sender side they have to be again assembled at the receiver side that is why we need some identification number so let us understand this is the ip datagram at the network layer and at the data link layer it will be encapsulated into the frame and there is an mtu a maximum transfer unit so according to that i will divide the ip datagram why do i need this identification field identification field identifies that a datagram originating from the source host okay then what is what are the flags there are two flags which we are using the uh, it is a 3 bit field a flag is a 3 bit field where the first bit is not used and the other two fields are d and m d means do not fragment m means more fragment if the d bit if the d bit is equals to 1 it means that the datagrams need not be fragmented okay and if it is equal to 0 it means they can be fragmented why uh, when is the d bit set to 1 it may be that it is uh, below the mtu value so you don't want to fragment it then comes the th third bit that is your m bit more fragments see i have uh, fragmented a particular datagram into four parts okay uh, the first datagram will uh, first fragment will reach the uh, destination 
so how will the destination know that there are more fragments to come if there are more fragments to come from the source the m bit will be 1 when the m bit will be become 0 it means that this is the last fragment of the datagram this is for synchronization then comes what is fragmentation offset fragmentation offset shows you the relative position of the fragment with respect to the whole datagram Okay, so now let us understand this with an example where you can see I have a datagram which is as long as 4000 bytes but my MTU maximum transfer unit says that I cannot transmit a fragment more than 1400 bytes. So I divide this 0 to 3999 into 3 fragments where the fragments are divided as 0 to 13, uh, 1399. 1400 to 2799, 2800 to 3999. That means a total of 4000 bytes. Now, what we do is, how is the offset being calculated? It is the relative position of the fragment with the whole datagram. What is the first uh, offset? Offset of the first one will be the, it is the first fragment. So, what is the off offset relative position from the whole datagram? It will be 0 by 8. Why am I dividing it by 8? Because we are representing the offset in terms of 8 bytes. That is why I am dividing it by 8. So you see, because it is the first fragment, what will be the relative position? The relative position will be the will be 0 only. But when it comes to the second fragment, what is the relative position or the offset of this fragment with the whole datagram? 1400 by 8. That comes up to 175. Then comes to the third datagram. The third datagram, what is the relative position of this fragment from the from the whole datagram? It is 2800 divided by 8, that is 350. So, this is how we calculate the fragmentation offset. So, all the fields are being covered. We have the version field, header length, service, total length, identification, flag bits, fragmentation offset, time to live, protocol, header checksum, source IP address and destination IP address. One last field left is options. We have some options in IPv4 datagram format. Let us look at what are the options. The options are, you can see this is a detailed example of what I have seen, I have shown you just now. How is a complete datagram being divided into, see you can see that uh, the value is 0 that means you would like to do fragmentation. There are two uh, fragments. So, I will do fragmentation where I am not fragmenting this any further. So, it will be 1, 1, it will more fragments to come. So, 1, 1 but this is the last fragment. So, more fragment value will be 0 and then what is the offset? The first offset will be 0, second offset will be 175 and the other offset will be 350. If you want to further divide this, you can further divide this fragment into more fragments. Then what is the option field? The last field is the option field. The options are not required uh, in the datagram. They are used basically for testing and debugging. They are optional. What is the uh, different options? The different options are end of option which is a one byte option used for padding at the end. So if you want to do alignment of uh, the bytes in, the, in that we will pad some one byte extra that is called as end of option. Record root option. Record root option is used to record the internet routers that handle the datagram. That means if I am sending the datagram from source to destination, what are the routes that can come up to in that particular uh, journey? Okay, so I can list up to 9 router, router addresses, maximum of 9 router addresses. The root of uh, the particular datagram is recorded in record root. Then with respect to record root, I have two options, strict source root and loose source root. Strict source root means a datagram has to follow the root specified in the root which has been specified in that particular option. It has to go according to the root that has been told. But in loose source root, it can go, it has to follow the root which has to be given, but it can also visit other uh, routers in between. Then comes the timestamp option. 
is this is the option used to record the time of the datagram processing by a router a particular router processes the datagram for a particular time that timestamp is stored in the timestamp option so all these are the fields of the datagram format of ipv4 in the next video we will learn about the dat datagram format of ipv6 thank you